Hi, this is Shadi, and today we're going back to 1920, visiting the National Diet Library for a book by Oda Tsunetane himself. We call him the father of Kosen Judo. This book is called Thus Judo Wins or Judo Thus Wins from 1920. This book does not feature submissions. Um, submissions have been long invented. I've covered them in the past. But this book actually has the stuff that ties everything together and makes you a good ground grappler. I'm talking about transitioning, talking about passing, uh, of course, sweeping, etc. So today we're going to see what makes a wholesome ground grappler and see what he came up with up until 1920. So here, the first one that we're going to see is your uh, over under uh, pass. This pass is very uh, famous in judo up until till this day. Jimmy Pedro and his students particularly are very uh, good at it and made it famous uh, in recent years. So here, let's see Jimmy Pedro actually doing it. So here you grab a skirt from the underhook on the side and the other side you actually overhook the leg and then you start to pass the leg that is uh, in between your legs in order to get into side control or Yoko Shiho. Uh, Igetami. So here he lifts up his hips in order to free himself from the leg of Bernardo uh, Faria and thus he passed and hooks or actually jams his uh, thigh into his hips in order to prevent him from shrimping and turning uh, into him. This is a very classical uh, guard pass. The next one is like a, I would say a mix between a stack and a knee slice. Here you see you have the uh, underhook of the leg uh, clearly going above his shoulder uh, and then grabbing the pants of the other leg pinning it down to the ground before he slides or slices it with his knee in order to pass here you see uh, the knee slice with the shin and getting finally into yoko shiogatame or side control again this book features this particular stuff i'll leave it in the description below of course for you to check it out uh, everything that ties everything together from positions up until the submission so the next one here is also another classical turnover in judo till this day um, where you actually grab the tricep and then you pull it towards you which forces them to turn towards you and then with your chest and shoulders you actually push in order to flatten them uh, out uh, on their back as you see here so this is a very classical but very effective turnover children uh, learn it from the very beginning because pinning is all that uh, counts in their newaza up until their teenagers so um, the next one here is your uh, half butterfly sweep so here you see he grips over the belt hooks the leg uh, on one side and then with the other he goes underneath like a what we call a butterfly hook and then lifts it and with the other leg that's blocked he can actually uh, sweep them and get on top. Um, you can actually do it with both feet underneath uh, or, or just one foot in and the other is blocking. We call it half butterfly or uh, full butterfly. In judo, uh, this is also very popular. A lot of people just get underneath on purpose in order to get this particular turnover or sweep in order to get to the pin uh, or osai komi. Here you see Mark Housinga uh demonstrating it it's very important to have your arm over because uh, of them posting it and preventing the sweep here you see someone's trying to go for a ground at uh, attack or a drop attack he tries to take the back he pulls them in to a butterfly guard sweeps them and get on top for the osaikomi so again this is from the 1990s i believe or the early 2000s um still being done we can see here it's traced back to at least 1920 even earlier because when you write a book that's not when the particular concept was invented but rather that's when it was documented so this was the stuff that Oda Tsunetane was working on in the 1910s here is another example by Tsukasa Yoshida uh, pulling uh, Nora Jakova towards her in order to get the sweep after a fight and then she recovers guard but passes with a knee slice into Osai Komi. The next one here, you can see um, transitioning between side control and uh, mount or tate shiogetame. So again, weight transference, leverage, etc. When someone is giving you a hard time, what we call in judo around the world, when they're trying to go or defend something, you switch 
between positions. Again, this is the stuff that makes you a complete grappler. It's not if you can do an armbar or a triangle or you can uh, like hold a, a Kezagatame or a Ushiro Kezagatame, but rather the stuff that ties in everything together. Finally here you can see your classical ankle sweep. Someone standing up in your guard, you grab the ankles, pull them towards you, extend your legs forward, knocking them uh, down. This is very, uh, I would say, white belt sweeps, but still works at the highest level. Let's see Hicks and Gracie discuss it. He explains here that it's not actually your hips that you are, uh, I would say, launching upwards, but rather extending of your feet uh, or your legs that actually creates the sweep and of course the pulling of the ankles um, here he's explaining you pull towards you and then you proceed to get into mount now getting into mount can be very tricky especially with today's level so Hickson actually has something uh, to add and I, I I've actually found it very interesting so here he explains that you actually extend your legs not so much exploding with the hips up that gets the sweep and of course the pulling uh, of the ankles. So now let's see how to actually get into mount and win the, I would say, a battle from re guard recovery. So here you extend and then you are actually on top. You need to get into mount position or Tate Shiho Getame. But here he says that if they're posting their arm, they're very strong. Um, they might actually put you down over your back once again and then you have to repeat the process all over. So um, his solution to this is actually posting the other arm on the ground as well um, in order to get a strong base and then proceed to get into mount. So here, let's see it. Post the arm and then it's kind of like a, a hip thrust sweep, but you slowly get into over them with mount, of course, using leverage, weight transference, uh, hips, etc. Not so much strength. And again, that's the stuff that I really love about Hickson is sprinkling in those little details to add to your overall game. So here he is explaining again, post, or if not, they're still very strong. You can actually roll your leg over into an arm lock. So um, this is very interesting stuff. This book, Thus Judo Wins, is not his book, the Katame Waza, the groundwork of Judo, the big Bible, I would say, of Neiwaza, but rather it's a very small book. A lot of it is writing, uh, not a submission in sight in this particular book, uh, but rather everything that uh, he's been working on. Again, the link will be in the description. It's in Japanese, but you can look at the photos and understand them. Uh, uh, why I appreciate this book, it's because, like I said, it's not the submission or the throw that makes you a good champion. I could hit the best Uchimata and Nagekomi, but if I have zero grip fighting, again, that's not going to get me to the Uchimata that I'm working on. So uh, everything that ties together from the moment you start fighting up until the pin, up until the arm lock or the strangle, up until the throw, if you're doing the stand up, is what makes you good the tactics of the grip fighting the tactics of how to transfer from position to position how to pass someone's guard how to uh, exert pressure slowly but surely up until getting to that pin and then finally to the submission so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon i have exclusive content for the patrons uh, only and please do not forget to check out the links for the book and Josh Simon's shop in the description. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.